Hello, everybody, CE peeps. Uh, of course, you guys know that I talk about Gaia ad nauseum. I just love that I discovered them. And I watch a Gaia program every single day. It's on my little to-do list on my iPhone and my little OCD index card. I just mm, love it. It's just like one of the best things that has ever happened in my recent life. They have everything about consciousness, spirituality, the Anunnaki, the ancient aliens, our true origins, the origin of the universe. And I just, I'm, I'm so proud of what they deliver as content. And so now, guess what? I'm a new Gaia ambassador. Yes, I'm all that and a bag of chips. So some of the things I really am into is the secret space program, um, like uh, the ancient uh, civilizations. It's just mind blowing. Uh, now I'm totally into intuition by this adorable guy uh, called Matias De Stefano. He's so cute and he says such mind-blowing things he's my new crush and now season with the uh, milan and antonio banderas i'm sorry done i'm dropping them like a hot date um but my husband and i now have a thing where we watch something every night from gaia and i got a free thing for you guys now i am going to introduce you to the microdose um series it's brand new and it's big ideas in bite-sized pieces because they're only like six or seven um, uh, minutes long. And the first one I'm gonna introduce you is the afterlife. And they have others like astral travel, uh, lucid dreaming. I'm even doing this, uh, learning how to lucid dream. It starts out where you journal your dreams and oh my God, my dreams. If anybody saw them, they'd be knocking on the door. Here's your straight jacket. So anyway, I, I'm going to put the information. I've got a, a new portal that um, I will show you how to sign up and uh, for the free stuff. I'm going to offer free content to you for the next seven days. You're going to be seeing how to get to each of the microdose uh, series. Now, let me make sure that I'm telling you everything I'm supposed to because I don't want you to miss out any of the free stuff, okay? Okay. Uh, I've told you about the favorite stuff I like. Oh my gosh, the mystery teachings, um, medical intuition, that's super cool. You can learn how to be more intuitive, how to channel better. Uh, there's everything, just really everything that you can imagine. Uh, actually, you can sign up for, I think it's seven day uh, free membership and you should do that you really should okay so I will put in the description box uh, the most important thing you need to know about how to go to my Gaia ambassador portal you will not regret it so without any further ado you are going to watch the first season um, I mean one of the one of my favorite of the microdose um, episode the series and that is the afterlife. Enjoy. See you on the flip flop. Bye. I think the hardest part of investigating the afterlife is what if the news is bad? But it's good, all the news is good, so do the investigation. The most important thing it does, I think, is take away all fear. That moment was when I understood that heaven is not a place, but it's a state. And whether I chose to stay there or come back into the body, now that I knew what I knew, I would bring heaven with me. Heaven, Bardo, Nirvana, the other side. The enigmatic idea of life after death has intrigued humanity since time immemorial. There have been thousands of anecdotes from around the world describing an afterlife, the vast majority of which come from near-death experiences, or NDEs. 
from a perception of being outside one's body to racing down a dark tunnel towards a bright white light, near-death experiencers frequently report remarkably similar occurrences. Yet are these accounts proof enough that our consciousness lives on after our corporeal form dies? Or are these experiences merely the result of a physical process within a dying brain? What can evidence for an afterlife reveal about the nature of our reality? According to a survey conducted by the International Association for Near-Death Studies in the U.S., Australia, and Germany, anywhere from 4 to 15 percent of the population has had a near-death experience. These numbers have been replicated in numerous other surveys, and interest in NDEs has grown exponentially of late. Accounts of near-death experiences date back to ancient times. Modern era research into near-death experiences is generally said to have begun in 1975. That was the year Raymond A. Moody, Jr., a philosopher turned psychiatrist, published Life After Life, a groundbreaking book based on interviews with some 150 near-death experiences. In all of the cases he looked into, Dr. Moody discovered claims of startling similarity with experiences at or near the moment of death. Near-death experiences are a common pattern of conscious experience that occurs to people who are on the verge of death. For example, in a cardiac arrest from which they are resuscitated. And basically they consist of elements that are common all over the world. Not every person has all of the elements, but among the things that people say are, that they hear the doctor say something like, oh my God, he's dead, or we've lost her, which is very surprising to them because they say that I have never felt so alive as when I heard that doctor say I was dead. Because from their point of view, they feel that they distance themselves from their physical body and they watch the scene of the resuscitation typically from a point of view above it. As this progresses, they eventually wake up to the fact that, oh, this must be something to do with death. And at that point, they enter into states of consciousness that no matter how articulate they may be, they say there are no words for it, that it's indescribable. They go through a passageway into a beautiful light they feel comfort, peace, and joy. They meet relatives and friends of theirs who have died. And they go through panoramic memory in which everything they've ever done is displayed around them in a sort of holographic, three-dimensional panorama. And they come back from these experiences with a total new take on life, thinking that the most important thing we can do while we're here is to learn how to love and saying that they have no more fear of death because they feel that death is just a transition into some other reality. Is this other reality a hallucination through firing synapses within the dying brain? Or could it be a literal other realm accessed by a liberated consciousness at the moment of death? In 2012, Dr. Ibn Alexander published the book Proof of Heaven, a neurosurgeon's journey into the afterlife when, several years earlier, his brain was attacked by a rare and mysterious bacterium, he laid motionless in a coma for seven days. During that time, Dr. Alexander claimed that he went on a journey beyond this world, meeting an angelic being who guided him back to a divine source of the universe. It all started uh, with uh, 54 years of life, working as an academic neurosurgeon, thinking I understood brain, mind, and consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 4.30 in the morning, November 10th, 2008, I suddenly became very ill uh, with a rapidly progressive uh, gram-negative bacterial meningoencephalitis that uh, took over my brain within a few hours, uh, drove me into a state of seizures, oh, deep geez. into coma. Uh, and then I was admitted to a hospital uh, where I had worked as a neurosurgeon and I spent seven days in that coma. 
Uh, my doctors uh, basically thought I had a 10% chance of survival early in the week, down to 2% by the end of the week, with no chance of recovery. And that's when I started coming back to this world. Uh, had an extraordinary experience Gosh. that by all of current neuroscience would be completely impossible because of the damage to the human part of my brain, my neocortex. And yet it did happen. And that uh, has been the basis of this mystery I've been trying to unravel uh, for the last nine years. Dr. Alexander is one of a growing number of highly credentialed medical professionals who counter the arguments of scientists who attribute the NDE experience to factors such as oxygen shortage, imperfect anesthesia, and the body's neurochemical responses to trauma. Specialists like Dr. Alexander dismiss these explanations as inadequate. The medical conditions under which NDEs happen, they say, are too varied to explain a phenomenon that seems so widespread and consistent. They believe that the NDE is a result of consciousness existing in some non-material form, independent of, but closely connected to, the brain. At the time of death, they hold, consciousness is released to experience another realm. Regardless of scientific evidence, the near-death experience has repeatedly been reported to be an incredibly powerful one, often leading to profound revelation and transformation. Well, it all started in a very primitive, coarse, unresponsive realm that I call the earthworm's eye view, a very, very dark and murky uh, kind of coarse reality, like being in dirty jello. Turns out that from that realm, I was rescued by a slowly spinning white light, very clear, that came bundled with a perfect musical melody. And that white light opened up like a rip in the fabric of that ugly earthworm eye view realm and led up into an ultra real valley what I call the Gateway Valley, that was filled with many Earth-like features. For example, there was lots of plant life, lush growing, flowers blossoming, buds on trees, uh, no sign of any death or decay. But that was only a stepping stone mm -hmm. to higher and higher levels. Uh, and in fact, those angelic choirs, the music uh, from them provided yet another portal. Music, vibration, frequency are the way that our souls transcend these realms. But it was just an extraordinary spiritual journey. And the most amazing thing, of course, is that it happened when my brain was demonstrably offline, when the neocortex uh, was known by my neurologic exams, by my scans. My doctors knew that I could not have had any kind of robust experience because this was far more real than anything yeah. I've ever experienced in my existence. So what then does the NDE reveal about the very nature of reality? I am completely confident in saying, yeah, the physical world is an illusion and, uh, you know, and it makes me sound psychotic and that's all right. Because if they haul me away to a mental hospital, that's an illusion too and maybe a very interesting one, right? I mean, we're not putting the world down by saying that it's illusory. This is an illusory, narrative-driven thing we're in. And where I have come in my thinking about it is that apparently we finish this one story and then we go through some incomprehensible process and then I gather we're back on another storyline. In 2014, linguist and author Lisa Smart created The Final Words Project with Dr. Raymond Moody. This investigation collects accounts from healthcare providers, friends, and family members of the dying. Her book, Words at the Threshold, offers the early findings of the investigation. So in the words of Stephen Jobs, just before he died, the words were, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. His words are the ones that might be most popular, many of us have heard, but what's remarkable is in bedrooms or in hospital rooms throughout the country, even throughout the world, words like that are being heard privately, um, people are seeing remarkable things oftentimes as they leave this world. I love that. I mean, of all the things he'd seen in this life, what he'd seen over there was unbelievable. So what is over there? Does it really exist? And if so, where? While much more scientific study is required to empirically answer these questions, what is clear is that the near-death experience is an excellent vehicle for exploring the ancient human belief that we are more than our physical bodies. The reality of an afterlife not only suggests that there is more to consciousness than chemical and electrical impulses in the brain, but when the end of life is upon us, 
Fear may be an unwarranted emotion. Life on this earth is precious. Yet our passage into the afterlife, beyond this reality, may truly be a wonderful journey. I mean, to my utter surprise, there is a life after death. So don't be afraid of death. It's not anything to be scared of. But stay here as long as your sentence is, because when you get out of here, it will make sense. So I really hope you enjoyed that microdose episode on the afterlife. Kind of cool, right? So there's so much more to explore, I'm telling you. So a big thanks to our new friends at Gaia. Now guess what? You can go right to the next or any episode of Microdose and you can do it for free. All you have to do is go to my new Gaia webpage, which is Gaia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it, Elisa? Come on, old lady alert. Gaia.com slash channeling slash. That sounds so psycho. Anyway, slash channeling dash Eric. All right. Now, you can write that in the URL address bar. Or if you're lazy like me, you could just go to the web, I mean, the description box of this video and click right on it to go right to the, the microdose series. So, I can't make it any simpler, I'm sorry. Anyway, so I'm gonna be sharing so much exclusive Gaia content with you guys over the next weeks and months and you're not gonna to wanna to miss it, so please stay tuned. There's just so much energy and just awesome stories to share, guys. So, yeah, stay tuned. And I want to thank you guys for bearing with my muttering and stumbling. So, you're used to me, right? Yeah, you are. All right. So, thanks, everybody. Toodles. Bye-bye.